All right, here we go. Uh, DJ Kazell in the house on What's Universal up? Room. Man, this is this is big because to me, man, uh, we got a chance to talk a while back on one of the interviews that I I did, and uh, you're obviously Mariah, Mariah's a, a manager and and everything else, I guess. But um, I got a chance to talk to you, and I didn't know who I was talking to at the time, man. Like you called in, like who the fuck are you, like? You want to interview Mariah? And I'm like, yeah. And, and, and I, I had, I really didn't have any information as far as, as like interviews and things like that. So it was just kind of cool talking to you. We talked to you for a good like 30, 45 minutes just about music and things like that. And just right. kind of, you know, just the interview and stuff. But I really didn't know who the fuck I was talking to. And then as time went on, I, I you know, you draw, you came on, um, uh, you came up in, a, in an interview with George. Uh, vinyl life and he was like yeah dj kazell like dude was huge like did a lot of good stuff like back in the day and still doing good things and i was like wait like what like this is crazy so then i just started seeing like videos i started seeing concerts you know starting doing some of these really big shows and i'm like man i gotta talk to this guy i, I didn't know who i was messing with here talking to you so here we are man i'm glad that you uh you know agreed to do this and just kind of do a live and talk about just uh, you coming up, so thank you for doing this. No, absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So I, the first thing that you know that I've kind of done some research on is the first thing that I've noticed, like throughout the interviews that you have done, uh, I see a visionary, man. I see, a, I see you as a visionary, like an entrepreneur, a DJ, and, and much more, and at a very young age. And I, and I think like just all the information that I gathered, it's like, man, you're like way ahead of your time. And being at a young age and doing some of the things that you were doing, just really incredible. So I just wanted to say that and start where, you know, where were you raised and born? And let's talk about that. Oh, absolutely, man. So I was born in, in uh, La Puente area, La Puente, California, San Gabriel Valley, uh, West Covina Hospital to be exact. So <laughs> I was out there. Uh, you know, that was my city, man. Born and raised out there in La Puente. You know what I mean? What's up? And uh, that's that's pretty much where everything pretty much started for me, bro. Yeah, well, now, was it in the hood right there? Like, was it pretty rough or is it, eh, like, you know, whatevs? I mean, it, it, it's it's like every every neighborhood, you know what I mean? It, it's rough, but it's like, that's my family out there. I grew up with everyone out there, man. So I just ate beans and rice with everyone else, dog. You know what I mean? Started from the streets and just uh, got to where I needed to be, bro. But yeah, it's 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 it was rough, bro. Growing up, you know, it was it was a pretty crazy neighborhood. But you know, I mean, all those guys, I love them all, bro. All my brothers out there, man. Oh yeah. Uh, and then now, your father was in a band. I think this is really big right. because you know he's obviously doing it. You know, uh, I'm sure weekly and practicing, and you're around this. Was he a big inspiration for you, uh, just to kind of get started with the whole DJ thing, or was it just? Okay. Oh no, definitely, definitely, very uh, inspirational, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, I, my dad, you know, growing up, all I remember was him with the guitar. You know what I mean? Just the guitar singing. You know, what I mean, right there, my mom having a beer and just just hanging out. And my uncle was too. Used to used to play it also. That's all I remember, dude. Like growing up in the day, my mom and dad dancing in the front room with the forty fives, listening to music, and my dad out there with the guitar singing. And 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 man, I was just amazed. I just remember uh, growing up seeing that, and I was like, man, dude, I. I just, love this music like oldies no matter what i what genre i ever got myself into or, or the or the businesses or music in general that that was always like it hit home for me every time i heard heard oldies or someone singing or live bands I'm like man you know i started thinking about my dad and my parents and uh he tried to get me you know messing around with guitar and, and, and music man but i'm left-handed dude so it's kind of hard for me to to mess with the guitar and you know that just that just wasn't my thing bro you know what i mean but yeah definitely it just it was just great memories dude and and my dad was definitely a big inspiration. It just unfortunately it just I, I I ended up playing a different instrument, you know what I mean? And and getting to the turntables. That was that was my my thing. Yeah, and and uh so your brother, your brother was the DJ of the family, I think, first, right? And he kinda like kinda introduced you to the turntables and he's around some of the some of the big DJs that are, you know, big today still. And I guess what was like uh what was it like kind of growing up under him and seeing what he's doing on the turntables? So, so how that happened, uh, when we're younger, you know, we, his childhood was the Bell Gardens area. You know what I mean? Like me and my older brother are 10 years apart. Uh, my brother's Freddie G 
Um, and, and it's, uh, it's crazy. Cause I remember, um, in the garage out there, they used to always you know, have music loud, man. And I, I know I was younger, dude. So I went out there and I was about maybe seven years old. My brother was like 17 or something like that. Yeah. And I remember going to the garage, looking the side, you know, the old school wood garages that open like that. You can just open the side and look inside. So I remember looking in there and this dude was cutting it, man, getting down and blah, blah, blah. My brother was right there, right next to him. And, and, uh, you know, he went up and did his thing too. And I was just amazed, man, the, the guys is cutting in, doing the scratching and, and making two songs that a song that I'm very familiar with sounding like a different song. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not supposed to sound like that. So that attracted me, bro. I was like, man, it's just awesome. So, uh, they left one day, man, they took off. And I remember going and sneaking inside the garage, dude. And, and messing around with the turntables, I'm like, how do they make the scratching, dude? But and what it was, I I messed up the 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 uh, needle. So the needle on the record goes on the top, and I was actually scratching with the stylus and scratching the record, not not knowing what I was doing. Like, how are they making that? Cheek, cheek, cheek. So I started messing up their needles, and then I heard them coming, dude, and like driving up. Cause back then he was into like the lowrider mini trucks, you know. What I mean, I was like really big back then, dude, and he had like a fixed up one, and you could hear the speakers and the music coming all the way down the street. So. I heard up and it got down. And it ran inside and and uh, I just heard my my brother like man what the fuck blah, blah, blah. and I go in there and I hide inside dude and and he was asking my mom was anybody else there? Girl, I was like no you left the way it was like man so I mean he knows now but back in those days he's trying to find out who it was but that person he was cutting with it was uh, Muggs uh, at that time uh, he was very good with Cypress Hill uh, right. and, uh, they went to school together and all that stuff so. You know, I mean, I, I didn't find out to that until I got older and, and I knew about that. But my brother was, uh, he wasn't like really big into the DJing part. He just, he was really influenced the music. Like he, he was listening to Tony G, uh, you know what I mean? So, so your brother, your brother is like, you know, he's, I guess he's not really big into it, but he's hanging around with some, you know, some reputable guys, you know? So yeah. this is, this is inspiring you, I guess, to, to get, to take it to the next level here. So what, what's some of the music that you were listening to, or maybe some of the first stuff that you heard? you know, back then and just, wow, this is like really inspiring me to like, kind of like this music or get into this. There was definitely the funk, bro. Like the funk, electric funk, like the electric kingdom and the old, old school hip hop, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 that, I was like really pumped up, like in the LA dream team, you know what I mean? And then obviously planet rock, like all that I do, like, like just, just hearing like DJ scratch that and get down. That's what I learned off. Bro. I learned off the old hip hop. And I learned off a lot of the, the old electric funk stuff, dude. Just just actually, actually in the music, like, you know, when I started DJing, like, to mix that stuff, you know what I mean? And the scratchy patterns and all that. That's where everything pretty much came in. But that's what I fell in love with, bro, was that. And then funk, you know, my funk music all day long. My, you know, my uncle's playing, like, Zap and all that. It's like, man, that, I was, like, really, really attracted to that, dude. But as you get older, you know what I mean? It was crazy because, I mean, we'll get to that next, that next conversation. I'll let you ask the next question. <laughs> and I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, I wanted to bring up too, like the family, like it seemed like uh, your mom, obviously your dad's in the band, your brother's, you know, has the equipment and things like that. It kind of seemed like they're really behind you. And I think that's a big thing. Like they're, they're kind of like all pitching in. I think you had mentioned in another interview that your mother had kind of helped you with some records, you know, like pitched in on some records. Yeah, you had like a Fisher Price, like, uh, like type of like a uh, turntable and you like you're getting oh, like that's, a, that's a whole mixer. different story. That's a whole different story. So let me let me kind of fast forward to that part. You know, what I mean, we uh after growing up in Bell Gardens with my brother, that was his his era. You know, what I mean, we moved to uh to um, East LA for a little bit. You know, what I mean, and then uh, we moved on to La Puente, and we went we went out there. That's when pretty much everything started for me. You know, what I mean, at that time I was like uh, I was in uh, fourth grade or whatever. You know, what I mean. And, and I met a lot, a lot of good people, man. A lot of my homies, a lot of people, you know, we got real tired. I grew up with a lot of people. And then once I got towards, like, I want to say maybe sixth grade or so. I don't know about, about sixth grade or so. You know what I mean? We're, it's a tagging. That was my thing, bro. I love writing the walls, dude. I love doing that whole thing. And I was getting in trouble a lot, bro. I, get, I was getting in tr trouble a lot. And one night, I got caught in the billboard. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I the good thing about it, bro, is that I didn't write the billboard. So, I was up there and they caught me just in time and everybody else bowled out, dude. So they, they the cops, cops got me and said, get down. And they told me, luckily I didn't vandalize anything or else I would have been going to jail. So they asked me where I lived and obviously I had to tell them where I lived. And uh, where I was, where we lived was, uh, Valley was one of my main streets and, and, and we used to be on that all the time, bro. And, and there's mobbing us, we used to call it all over, 
all over the area. So anyway, they took me back home. And uh, man, I just remember my, my mom pissed and my dad looking at me, shaking his head, walked aside. And uh, the cops just telling me, yeah, we found him here with the disc, blah, 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 blah. And long story short, he goes, all right, officer, we'll take care of him. My mom from inside. I see my mom's evil eye. I already knew, like, damn, it's, it's over. So she said, like, go to the room. I'm like, fuck, dude, I went to the room. And all I remember was the, the Dodger bat, dude. I was like, that was like the worst enemy, the little small Dodger bats. Which, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. those blue ones? Oh, yeah. yeah. She, she just whipped my ass, dude. Like, <laughs> and then yeah. it was like, man, she was like, man, what the hell is wrong with you? Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And and I was like, man, dude, and I just and then my mom started crying, dude. And I was like, damn, dude, and seeing that happen, I was like, I gotta stop. And then my dad comes inside and 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 the room with us and start talking. And and he was like, man, boy, what do we gotta do to keep you out of trouble? Like, you know, what I mean, you're just, you're just, you're just, you know, you end up in jail or end up dead, and you don't want to see you like that, you know what I mean? And I I didn't see it like that, you know. I just see myself as writing into wall, writing on walls and having fun. But now that I think about it now, like the stuff I was doing, man, like shit, I could have. I could have really been gone for a while, dude. You know what I mean? But at that time, you're young and you think you get away with everything. So I think it was crazy that my parents called you at the right time. So my brother got involved, came home, and he was like, man, what happened? Because at the time, he wasn't living there. You know, he was older. And my mom told him the situation. He's like, man, so he's like, what do we got to do to keep you out of trouble? And, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. You know, my dad was only a worker, and, and he was hustling and doing his thing, dude. And, and I gave him props, man. He was, you know, true man, just working, building, you know, busting his ass. So they all got together, dude, and I said, I want to be a DJ. You know, that was the first thing that just came out. And uh, they're like, all right, cool. So we'll, we'll get you some turntables. So they didn't know nothing about it. And my, my brother did too, but he was like, dude, like, technique 1200, boy, you're looking at some crazy money. But why don't you start off, you know, just some turntables and just something that to learn off of. So I got some Fisher turntables, bro, and and, a, and a, a realistic mixer from Radio Shack, dude. And, and, a, and a, a, what was it, a Teak amplifier with some pile driver speakers bro like just put together do straight up swap me put together but that was like the best thing to me and i was like fuck bro i, I got a system and uh my dad's like all right you know this is what we're gonna get you and you know just this is what i want you to see you doing man just stay out of trouble man music is is, is gonna it's gonna help you and they keep you out of out of what you need you know out, out of jail and, and, and getting hurt and blah 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 so yeah lazy so I think we were left off. Uh, so you're doing the tagging thing, which I have questions about you tagging. I mean, so what goes into being a tagger? I feel like you, there's got to be some practice, right? And it's like got to got to be up uh, early mornings or late late nights. What, what was like it your was, plan as, as a kid? Like what was like your plan right there uh, when you're tagging? It was it was crazy. We were just a group of kids. Us, us growing up in in uh, school, and you know how it started was we fought a mean streak. You know what I mean? Streets like one of those oil-based markers. And we're like, what's this? So we had older, older friends that did that. And we're like, well, look, you get two different color uh, mean streaks and put it together, cut it off, and you have two different colors. Oh man, that's cool. So at that time we'll just we'll just write, you know, what I mean, on, on the on the bus stops. And that's all it was. And then later on, you know, I mean it, it, we started getting more involved. Like I I wish I knew how to piece and do all the bad murals. I was just a writer, bro. I was just hit up my name on the on the wall, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> But my other buddies were like the ones that were PCing and doing all that stuff. It was just, yeah. you know, I mean, my my thing was just trying to get up. But hit me up, bro. Hit me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how it was. So we, we used to just go, like, on the way to school, after school, in the nighttime. Like, you know, we would just wait till it got real dark. And then we just started hitting the streets. Dude, I would sneak out of the pad. And then we all meet up and we'd just go all the way down on uh, La Puente right there on Amar, on Nelson, on Valley. Like, I was all over those places. So it was it was, it was was fun, bro. Definitely good times. But... It, it didn't take too much technique to do it. You know what I mean? It just at that time, it was just, man, just getting your name up. People could see it, you know? And that that's what was, a, that was a, the adrenaline rush, dude, just to get, get, get different areas and just try to make sure we get away from uh, from people or the cops. And then, so what were you what were you tagging? Did you have a specific name? Or was it Cazelle at that time or no? So, so Cazelle was glasses, bro. So how I got the name, I got it from my older brother, dude. You know what I mean? Uh, he was. I always wore glasses, bro. Ever since I was young, dude, my vision ain't always the greatest, or ain't the greatest. So I used to wear big dorky glasses when I was younger. But I was into like you know breaking. I was. I used to do it. I was like in every element. Of, you know what I mean? Of, of like the whole b boy style stuff. You know what I mean? And and you know because my brother used to dance too. So all the I mean that's a bunch of different stuff. Do that. It all came together, which I probably left out. But uh, yeah, he used to do all break dance and stuff. So I used to do it too. Spin on my head, do all that crazy shit, pop. Yeah. And I had big dorky glasses, so my brother called me Kazel. I would call you Kazel, dude. 
And then ever since then, this the name stuck. So everybody thought, oh, it's gazelle, or you know, I'm like some type of animal. This is not, bro. So the whole the whole way that the name came out was because of the glasses, dude. You know, I was young with big ass glasses, and oh. back in the days, Run DMC. You know, you had uh, LL Cool J back then too. So wear the big old glasses. Well, those glasses were called gazelles. So that's how that happened. And then later on, it just stuck with me, bro. And you know, it is what it is now to this day. Nice. And again, just so if uh, everyone might have tuned out and tuned back in, we got uh, DJ Kazell here with us, kind of going over his uh, his life here, man, and his beginnings. Uh, now, at one point in time, so you're practicing like what every day on the turntables. Your family is kind of pitched in to help you do, you know, get the turntables and records and things like that. So. How hard are you practicing as a kid? And what, what age are we at right now where you're just going hard? <laughs> so I want to say I was, like, with the whole music and everything, about 12 years old. You know what I mean? Got, getting really serious into it was about 14 or so. You know what I mean? Like, I was still messing around, still slipping. But I was just like, man, you know what I mean? You know, one of my one of my buddies got busted. And, and I was like, man, dude, I was like, that was it. You know what I mean? He, he, he ended up doing some time. And I was like, man. So and then uh, my other buddy got in trouble. And then I was like, dude, like I seen how everything was happening. So like, man, I just gotta focus on this music. So I started getting into to my mom's records, going through the stuff, and actually learning. And that's when my brother was like, dude, the best way to do it is get two of the same records, and and try to blend them both together. Once you get get that uh, down packed, then you're good to go. And uh, so we did that. You know, at the time, my mom didn't have doubles of 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 her like Earth, Wind, and Fires and the GQs. You know, what I mean, at the, you know, at that time, those are buy one record and they just play it. So I was like, okay, cool. So we went to a local record shop that was in, in the indoor swap meet in Bassett. Um, and uh, it was my buddy of mine named, uh, named Mauricio Records. Well, Mauricio, Mauricio's Records. Um, and uh, at the time, dude, I heard a lot about him from other other cats, you know, because they took to go buy the tapes off of him. And they're saying, hey, that guy sells records too. You know what I mean? So we went there and and uh, and the first record I bought was uh, uh, Red Man, Time for Some Action. Now, actually purchased one, and, and that's the song that I learned how to blend those two songs from, and, and it, it just took off from there. So once I learned how to blend them, then I started experimenting with other music, and I started buying more music, and that's how things pretty much turned off from there, you know? Wow. And now, so you ended up working at this record shop, right? Uh, was this So this was a buddy of yours that had, like, a, like a, a swap meet or, like, a well, shop? Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't know him at the time. Obviously, that's my boy to this day. But, um, you know, I heard a lot about him, so I went, and that's where I knew where to, where to get the records. So we went in there, and I got to know him as time went, went on. I, I kept going and buying records, going back and forth, so he got to know me. And then, uh, you know, we, we, he was, you know, he had, had offered me to come help out every now and then. I'm like, yeah, I do a little to come help out, because he was always going back and forth to L.A. buying product. And I learned a lot of the, the game, um, the music industry, and, and a lot of, uh, of, of um, the way merchandising worked and retail, wholesale. And I was like, man, I was, like, really um, – admired about the the business and once i got more involved in it he was like well man why don't you come out and help me more you know i got an open position I'm like yeah so at the time he thought i was older dude but i was young dude i was only like i want to say i because th- when i kept going through i want to say maybe 15 now going to be 16 so it was about a year he got to know me wow. and from that year dude we just we just took off he had a dj system set up inside the swap meet and I would just be in there mixing every weekend. I'd be there mixing, learning stuff, and, and hearing music. And other DJs would come in and play. And uh, that's when I, I met my boy MC Bad Boy, which is Anthony Biscotti now. Um, and it just, uh, you know, it just pretty much took off from there, bro. And and I ended up learning. And once I got to the point where I was, I think I was decent, then I, I started meeting, uh, you know, more people around uh, my area. And uh, and it was like a perfect timing. We ended up moving from where we were to uh to my grandma's house and my dad my dad didn't purchase my grandma's home at another area of la puente and that's where everything started from um my neighbors across the street went to to party crews and into the whole scene dude i never really knew much about it because where i used to live like i would hear music i would there was there was a a house i mean there was a, a pad right behind me that always do like backyard stuff and back then it was all raves and 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 um like techno and all that stuff and i would look over the brick wall and like oh damn this is this is crazy you know oh. and uh but i never got that far to get to get deeper into it to get to meet those people because we had moved so when we moved it was a perfect time and that's when I, I i moved um to another area of la puente and my neighbors out there which i knew since i was a kid too because we always go visit my grandma and 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 uh, they would always be around there and uh 
Uh, so we just happened to go out there and I, and I started talking to him like, yeah, man, we're from Park Crew and blah, blah, blah. You're a DJ and da, da, da. So keep in mind, I was still working at Mauricio's. My parents would drop me off over there, go work and come back. So my time was still over there dealing with that. And then one day um, I took off that weekend and, um, you know, my neighbor was like, man, why don't you come hang out with us? Come check out a, 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 a one of our... Um, one of our, our backyard parties, bro, we're going to be throwing, you want to come spin? I'm like, uh, yeah, I was nervous, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I took a, you know, create my crates of records and I went and I started hearing the DJs, bro. And there's nothing I was playing, dude. You know what I mean? They're, they're into a whole different type of music. You know what I mean? And, and I was like, damn, dude, I'm still playing with this hip hop stuff. But that back then was Deep House. You know what I mean? Deep House was really, really, really big. And I'm like, well, I'm learning this. This is cool. You know what I mean? And I knew about that too, uh, because going to high school in the early nineties, like, uh, 90, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, going going to high school, early 90s, everybody was into Deep House and all that stuff. And and I was like, man, I had just been a freshman during that time when, when I was moving around. And I was like, dude, this is this is dope. So that's when I started transitioning. And I didn't want to DJ, bro. I, I went up there and I'm like, dude, what are these guys playing? So I, I got up there and, and I started spinning. By that time, everybody was all stoned. Everyone's doing their own shit. All <laughs> nods down. You know, I mean, that was, that was their thing. So I played yeah. and one of the DJs was telling me, hey, bro, that's cool, dude, but you know, you should probably go play like one of these, these hip hop joints and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, and that's when I knew like, dude, I got to start changing with the time. So I, I just started going out more. I didn't really DJ. I started, I started going out with the, with the, with the crew. I started meeting people, other party crews and started learning like the music, learning the scene. And I'm like, okay, cool. I could do this. And that's when I started getting more records and more music. And I just, it just took off to a different level after that, bro. So it was like a, it's like a perfect storm. So you're working at the record shop. Are they, are they carrying like this deep house stuff that they want to hear? And and then you're just no like crew or no no. So they didn't. So what happened was is he was Mo was like really into like uh like into hip hop. Mo was Mauricio, the owner of the record uh, record store. Okay. And then he started picking up because people started asking like, why don't you get some house music? Bro? So then when he started buying them, I started finding out who the distributors were and we started getting a lot of stuff. And we started, you know, picking up stuff from from, from Chicago because a lot of the Chicago music was big. And then a lot of local producers. And then once we started doing that, then that's when I started learning that music. And I'm like, all right, cool, I could play this. I could do this. And then I started getting all my music. I would basically work for records do back then. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, hell yeah, dude, we got records. Because oh. you know? everybody always wanted to play the new song or get the white label. And that was like a big thing back then. And uh, and I did it, dude. And I started. I, I was ready to play one of our one of our house parties, one of the backyard parties, and I told my boy like, "Hey, dude, I want to play. All right, go for it." So back then, everybody waiting in line, dude. Like, all right, I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm like, fuck, yeah. dude. All right, cool. I'm like, I'm like the last one, dude. All these guys were older than me, bro. Keep in mind, like, they were uh, juniors, and I was a fresh. No, they were juniors or seniors, I think, and I was a freshman, something like that. So then, um, you know, what I mean, I had to wait and wait. And and a, and a good thing about that though, dude, I got to re- meet a lot of legends, a lot of dope DJs, a lot of dope people, and that to this day are doing big things. So, anyways, getting getting back to the story, I'm waiting in line. When it's my turn, I get up, dude, and I start doing my thing, and it just kind of took it to a different level. Like, keep in mind, I was I was looking at a lot of videos at scratch, this and that, different tricks. So I would utilize that hip hop flavor that I would do, and and I'll put it with the house, and that's when I started scratching my house and doing tricks and. I started getting my my brand um, from that point on, you know, as a DJ yeah. that was scratch the house music. I think that's huge because I think back then, like like you said, you had the elements of the hip hop into the house, mm-hmm. and a lot of those DJs probably weren't even thinking about doing that type of scratching or even be capable of that type of speed, right? Because the BPM on on like a hip hop track is like 90, 100, and over right. here we're like at one thirty, one twenty five, maybe right, even faster. Right. I don't like that. Deep yeah, it was it, it was about one one twenty 120, one twenty five. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's pretty crazy, but yeah, it, it, I think that's what definitely helped me helped me out, and it kind of pushed me aside from everyone else. It kind of gave gave people an outlook of, of of what I do, and it, it kind of branded my own style, you know. Yeah. But um, it, it was it was it was dope. There was other other DJs that did it too, you know what I mean? And I definitely gave them props, but I, I I always wanted to be different, dude. I wanted to go out there and just. I would blend like different music, house music was something different. And then I would do like scratching my elbow and different stuff. And the only reason why I did that, cause I would learn on these DMC videos and like, fuck, I gotta try that. And I would try it in my room, bro. And just keep trying and trying and mix it. And I finally got like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. So yeah. I would do that at shows, bro. And that, that helped me out. But it, yeah. it was cool. It was cool, dude. I've seen a lot of different things, man. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and also want to go back to just the equipment and things like that. So, I mean, right now, I mean, obviously with Serato and a lot of these MIDI mixers and all that, it, mm-hmm. it makes things a lot simpler. But you're walking into these parties with like a crate or a bag or something, right? 
How many how many mm -hmm. records would you normally take with you to some of these backyard parties? Dude, the first time I went, I took a big old crate with me, and I see everybody with like a little <laughs> small crate. And I'm like, dude, like I had no idea. And oh, and then getting back to that, remember, keep in mind, I was used to using my finger as a pitch control. So uh, I was intimidated, dude. Like, what is that thing in the knob they're turning? What is that? What are they doing? I kept looking. Uh, and and that's when I, I was like, okay, cool, man. I I I did the first time and messed it in. Nobody paid attention to me because everyone was getting all high, everyone was doing everything and messing around. <laughs> I'm just like a young buck up there, bro. Like, okay, I'm gonna try this. So that's why I, I took time to to start learning and looking at other DJs what they did and how they moved. Cause nobody at the time, bro, nobody wanted to teach you anything, bro. Nobody wanted to yeah. show you how to do this or that. Like you gotta learn your own, bro. You know what I mean? So I started paying attention. Okay, that's what that's for. Okay, they speed this up. This goes slower. And then that's pretty much how I learned on my own. One day I just went up there. And I took my records and see what everybody else is taking. So I kind of just mimicked it and I did my own thing. And that's why I started scratching and it kind of worked out. And I was like, man, I love this. So I just, I was, I fell in love with the turntables. So how I ended up getting my own was I started doing you know, more backyard stuff and saving my money, dude. And, and doing you know, family events and different functions. You know, I mean, I, I at that time I met a lot of different DJs, so I would borrow their system and I would split the money with them, and you know, we would go do backyard stuff, and I was able to eventually buy my own equipment, dude, and, and I was like, man, this is awesome, and I think the first turntable, the first set I got, I was like, man, dude, I, I cherish those things, dude, and then I got the mixer, and I think it was a Newmark mixer, dude, and then it was just it was on from there, and I just started upgrading and started learning more stuff, and you know, yeah. I mean, it just pretty much took off. Now, were the Bucks pretty big? Because I remember, like, I had, you know, family members back in the day. I mean, they would get paid pretty well to do a DJ gig because you had to buy the records. Not everybody was a DJ like they are now. Like, I mean, yeah. there's, like, I mean, there's DJs right now, like myself, making, like, you know, 100 bucks a gig. You're rocking the, you're rocking the fucking club. You're making, like, 100 bucks walking out, you know? <laughs> but uh, back then, were you making some pretty decent dough, uh, you know, doing these backyard parties and family parties? I mean, I mean, for the age I was, dude, you know, what I mean, I think I was, it was pretty decent, you know, because money was different back then, you know, what I mean, I think like minimum wage was like four fifty or something, you know, what I mean, so right. I was, I was getting like one hundred and fifty dollars to go spend, dude, you know, what I mean, and and I was right. like, it was like four hours <laughs> to go do a party, and then later on, you know, what I mean, it started going up to like two hundred, you know, and I was like, I think about it now, I was like, damn, dude, I, that's crazy, I DJ four hours for two hundred bucks, yeah. but it, it's cool, bro, because I mean. It, I always been a humble cat, bro. Like I, I, I'll go play free sometimes. I don't even care, bro. I just love the music. You know what I'm saying? But I gotta also remember that this is a business. You know, what yeah. I mean, I, I, I started from the bottom and worked my way up, and, and I, I gotta, I gotta keep my, my, my business right too. Sometimes, you know what I mean? But there will be times I go play and mess around, dude. But anyways, getting back to that, we, we, it was funny. Me and my boys were talking about it. Remember we used to get paid this or even fifty bucks, dude. You know what I mean? And you'll take all your equipment, setting everything up. Yeah. Because at that time we just wanted to play, dude. We just wanted to play. We wanted people to hear us, you know, and just to be able to make a crowd rock and dance, dude. That was the best feeling, dude, ever, you know. Yeah. And I think that that was a lot of the that that was my momentum. That was my time of of living, bro. Where I seen people dancing to what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like play my music, do my tricks, and there'll be time where people just be looking at me, dude, and and just see me do my 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 show, you know what I mean? Because I ended up making it to a point where I started building a show and do scratchy, doing tricks and doing stuff and. And and it just ended up working out. But I had a, always had a bad habit, bro, of dancing. So when I'm <laughs> DJ behind the scene, bro, yes, dude, because I'll feel it. So I'll be in the yeah. back and I'll be like, uh, uh, uh. And then with house music, I'll be like this, like all pumped up. <laughs> so I, I think there's old videos out there of me or something out there where you'll see like the stuff that I've done. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like I, I just you would feel the music and the bass, and it was like, man, that was those of crazy times, you know what I mean? But definitely, man, I I I I I still think about the the past and how we started and what we used to get paid. Like, like you mentioned, like, yeah, it was, it was crazy times, bro. I also want to talk about, uh, so there was a DJ battle at La Puente high school, right. That kind of <laughs> really changed. I, I, I want to say, I mean, I guess from the outside is, was that like a big life changer for you? Like, you know, like your friends, like anticipating this battle. I'm pretty sure there's chicks like anticipating this battle. I mean, what was the, what was the lead up to that uh, battle in high school? So it was like, it was, I, I didn't even want to call it a battle, dude, because I only really played two records, dude. You know what I'm saying? It was just weird. It just, it was so many people at that time wanted to be a DJ, bro. Like, I think everybody wanted to be a DJ at that time. So I think what, what kind of got me um, separated from everybody else is that I was able to put that little scratching element and little something little different onto it and, and I ended up winning it, dude. So it was pretty cool. But I mean, I, 
Now I think about it now, I was like, dude, all I did was play a couple of records and I did a little, and then, you know what I mean? But to everybody back then, it was like, wow, dude, you did that to house music. Like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's cool, dude. You know what I mean? It, it's it's crazy to, to to think about that. It was me and my older brother. And, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's the a dope thing, bro, is that when my older brother, he's always been with me through all these all, all these shows and, and all the stuff I've done. So he's seen me grow. You know what I mean? So he he trips on me. It's like, damn, bro, I remember you back in the days. Big old dorky glasses. It's a pick on you. Now look at, bro, you're doing things. And it's like, you know, bro, I just, I stood humble, bro. I, 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 I kept my composure. I never acted like I was better than anybody, bro. Because, I mean, I had, I was a fan of a couple of DJs, bro. And, and I would try to come talking to them. And I remember that feeling of rejection, bro. Like, like, oh, dude, no, nah, hey, okay, man, thank you. Like, I'll be like, hey, bro, you got down, dude, yeah. All right, bro, thanks. And I'm like, damn, dude, like, what an asshole, you know what I'm saying? So I always yeah. promised myself if I ever had it, got into a position in that stature, you know what I mean, I, I would never act a fool like that, dude, you know what I mean? I, I, I love my fans to this day. I love everyone, bro. I, I chop it up of everybody, dude, and, and I never ignore anyone. If it hits me up, I might not get back to them on my, on my Facebook or whatever, dude. But I, I mean, right away, but I'll get back to him a couple of days later. Because it, it's crazy, dude. And I'm not trying to brag, but I, I get like my phone going off and off all the time. I don't even deal with my Instagram. I have my, my team run that and, and, and administrate it, dude. Because at one point, I had both of them going off and I would be getting like texts and alerts at the same time as you see right now, like getting phone calls. Like, right, it's crazy. I, and I'm only dealing with Facebook, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm like, it, it's just crazy, dude. Like, <laughs> you look at my phone now, I got like, 2,395 wow. texts, dude, right now. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just That's insane. crazy. It's just that I haven't answered them yet. <laughs> but it, but it's cool, bro. It's, it's a blessing, bro, to be where I'm at right now, to be able to to do what I'm doing and see what I've seen, you know? Yeah, so the party crew, there was a party crew that kind of started, I guess, right around this time as well. Was it uh, Rated X? Is that the, the party crew name? Can you talk about that time? Because I, I also want to talk about, before we even get to that, like, the yeah. house music, like, I remember that music as a kid and I was like, what is this shit? Like, it was so weird. It was so different from what was out there. Like a lot of hip hop was big. And then this music kind of started hitting like Power 106 at night. You know, that, yeah. that music was just like real, like that hard house was like, it was cool to dance to, but it was just like really different music. So can you talk about like that change of music that just kind of happened and how like you liking that type of music? Like what, what got you into that music? Well, like they say, you know, you are who you hang out with. You know what I mean? I guess. And at that time, I was I was hanging out with my neighbor across the street. He was the one that that uh, uh, influenced me and introduced me to the scene. You know what I mean? He was from the party crew rated X. Okay. So I, I was I was just like, man, dude, like I admired everything. I mean, keep in mind, everybody was older than me, dude. So it was like a different element for me. So I just was concentrating on the music and DJing and meeting people and and this and that while they're out there partying and doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, this is awesome. So they would take me around and we keep doing different things, but it got to a point where, you know I mean? They, they started moving on and, and graduating and doing different stuff. And and I'm like, man, I'm, I still want to do things. So that's when I, I formed my own my own party crew and, and then it was called Wicked Productions. And, and I started getting my own team together and we started throwing our own stuff. So with that music, it was already pumping. It was so popular. So it was, I mean, you had no choice just to be a, a, involved with it because you're already vibing to it. You know what I mean? Everyone's loving it was hearing it, dude. And I was able to uh, to to be more involved with it and, and actually make music, dude. You know what I mean? That's another story we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, it, 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 it the story is crazy, bro. It, it starts, I, I think I went all over the place with it, but I, I'm just kind of getting down to the picture of, of how everything's kind of settled in, you know? And w So when I started my crew, we started doing that. I started throwing on shows and Man, I was never pretty much at school because I was just throwing ditchy parties and doing this. And back then, we we would uh, communicate through pagers, you know what I mean? Have your voicemail. And, and we would tell everybody, yeah, the party's going to be here, the address, or we have map points, and we throw map points out, and people get the paper and find out where the after hours are going to be. Like, that was that was a shit, dude. But the music, the transition of it, 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 it all, I remember, like I said, uh, where I used to live, it was more harder, like like the music, and now I know it's techno, you know, where the don 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 did yeah. all that, you know. What I mean, then it kind of mellowed out to deep house, and that's when I started getting involved in it. And then deep house started getting into hard house, and then think that's where my element started for me because when I got involved with Rated X, the deep house scene was where I was doing. I was barely, I was developing myself with the music and learning it. And then when they were gone, that's when I was able to get deeper into this whole new song, which was which was hard house. And and that's where the door is definitely open for me. Yeah. Time. 
and you're like what 16 17 years old you know starting a company yeah. right and then making this music so so okay you're already djing you started your own company 16 or 17 years old you're throwing ditch parties like where are, you, are your parents freaking out at this point because you, you I mentioned well, that you graduated and you're just kind of well yeah it. it's kind of it's kind of like i think it, it, it's it's still i gotta keep going on the story because it didn't start off just with a record label like that mm -hmm. so it, it happened like this so i end up uh Mauricio opened up another shop down the street okay. uh, by by my mom my 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 mom's house that now now mom and dad's house with which they purchased off of my my grandparents so uh, he's like man I'm opening a shop right next to you so it was right down the street so I happened to to go work there run it and right next door was a was a, an auto mechanic shop no a, a radio installation shop so I I met um, uh, my boy which is my my brother now uh, Alex RC which was deep into the stuff too and we just kind of connected and he knew a lot of different people. And he was like, "Hey, man, I got this buddy that's uh, producing music, and and uh, you know, at that time it was Nina Santiago. They were, they were doing that. It feels so good." Mm -hmm. He goes, "Man, he got to hear what you could do, like that scratchy power. They need to make a house music out of your out of your scratchy, man. And do this." He goes, "Well, I want you to meet him." So we went, and uh, we met the, the 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 main guy, which is Juanito, DJ Juanito. And at that time, he was doing Busta Grooves and all these different vinyls. Like, man, I got to get his record. So. I was like, all right, cool. So I met him, and, and he was cool. You know what I mean? He's older dude, busy, you know what I mean? So he was like, you know, hey, what's up, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. But he was real type of my boy, Alex. So Alex was telling me, hey, I'm, I'm, he goes, um, this is my boy, man. I want to start managing him. And I'm like, like, you know what I mean? We didn't even talk about that, but we got real tight. And then, you know, later on, he goes, hey, I'm sorry, bro. I hope I, you know, I, I didn't uh, offend you because I still want to manage you. Like, no, nah, bro, I think that'd be cool. Because, bro, you're talented, dude. I, I see a lot a lot of potential in you, bro. You just need help and push and the right connections. So I'm like, yeah, cool. So we started coming around and I started getting to know Juanito more. And then I started meeting all these other producers, uh, G bone, Lalo G bone, which is George Santano. Now then Mark V and Puggy bear. They're real big DJ Irene. Like I started meeting all these producers and they all started with Juanito, man. So I was like, wow. So he taught all these guys how to produce. So I was there looking, learning, learning. And then, uh, he's finally sat down with me. Like, hey, cause I, what's your passion? What do you want to do? I said, man, I love music, dude. I, I would love to have people play my own stuff and, and, and get that music heard. So he's like, all right, well, this is what this does. This is what that does. And I sat there, bro, and I was just working and working. I literally just pretty much after I left with, with Mariso, then I would go uh, get dropped off over there in, in Hollywood, bro. That's where the studio was. Or I would go with my boy Alex. We'll be there all, all the time. Wow. And I learned, bro. I learned how to produce. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I did this. And that's when I started doing a, a different music. And there was a first label that we started called Playhouse Records. And that was my my boy Alex's label. It was like, you know what? I'm going to fund this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release your, your first your first record like really so i, I mean it's it, it's it's funny because like i i looked online and they're selling that that record for like 250 bucks dude i'm like wow. damn i should have kept all my i should have kept all my records dude wow. i would have sold it myself but that's it's it's crazy. cool because it's, that was a part of my history dude and, and that's when everything started and uh you know we brought out that record and it did okay it just i wasn't advanced it to the sound so i kept learning and learning and then when i got deeper into it i was like okay cool he was like, let's work on a, on a, on a mixed CD. It goes to this way. People could start getting to know what you do. I'm like, yeah. But then uh, Juanito got real busy, dude. And and he started traveling, doing other stuff. So then I was like, okay, cool. It's all good. You know, when my time comes, you know, when, when the opportunity comes. So at that time, I started getting booked to DJ Light, And I started throwing my own shows. I started doing my own little backyard parties, all my stuff. That's when I, I had foreign Wicked Productions. You know what I mean? Rated X, all the guys got older. And that's when I started doing my own stuff. So as, as time went on, I started getting booked for shows and I got booked for this show. Um, at that time it was for industry insider or industry Insider was a magazine back then. Mm -hmm. uh, my boy Chang Weisberg, he had, he had started and he hit me up. He rented the whole peppers at the time was a parking lot. And he's like, Hey man, why don't you come on and play dude? Come on and do your thing. And I got other DJs. I'm like, all right, cool. I think it was me, Humpty, uh, bad boy, Bill, wow. uh, bam, bam. Like some of these, some of these cats from Chicago. And um, I'm like, cool. So I went out there and I started doing my shit, my tricks, everything, just killing it, bro. At that time, everybody was vibing. And in the audience was a, a, an executive from Record Label. I just kept seeing him with his arms turning, he's looking at me, looking at me, <laughs> and looking at the crowd and looking at the crowd and looking at me and they had a big smile. So I finished my set and they're like, yeah, cause blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I get down and he, and he comes up to me. Hey, how's it going? Cause oh, my name is Pebo Rodriguez. I'm with Thump Records and he gave me his card. I'm like, hey, what's up, people? Because man, I love what you do. I, I seen how you how you control the audience and your style and the way you move and that elbow scratching thing was amazing. I'm like, oh man, thank wow. you. He was like, hey, would, have you ever thought about doing a, a compilation like a, a mix CD? I 
I'm like, man, I would love to do that. I wasn't in, in the works of doing it, but uh, it just never fell through. He goes, hey, I, I want to talk to you, man. Let's, let's meet up on a Tuesday. This was Saturday. I did this. Goes, I'm going to be in the office Tuesday. Give me a call. Sure enough, man, I gave him a call Tuesday morning, and, and he's like, hey, because can you come in the office wearing Walnut? And I was in La Puente, so it wasn't too far. So we went. And he sat down with me. He goes, man, I love what you do. I love that music. This is what's growing. This is new. He goes, how would you like doing a, a mix CD? And then we could put the, the compilation. You get all the music, you pick it, and we'll put it together. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, and then Bill walks by. And he comes in, and Bill Walker is the owner of Dump Records. At that time, they were getting connected with Universal. So I was like, all right, cool. So he's like, hey, Bill, this is the kid I was telling you about. I'm like, hey, what's up? Bro? So we started talking. And and he says, uh, he goes, well, people has a lot of faith in you. And he, and he talks highly of you. And I, and I back up what he says. So um, you guys work it out from here. You don't need me. I'm like, all right, well, nice meeting you. Cool. So he was like, yeah, man. He goes, I, I came from the disco area. Um, you know, I mean, he did uh, that song. Fuck, what was it? Oh, he was from the group Stop. And I think it was called Wake Up. It yeah, was like, like an old, uh, uh, yeah. So that was his his group. And he was telling me back wow. in those days. That's what he used to do. So wow. I'm like, oh, man, that's awesome. So long story short, bro. He's like, okay, well, let's start working and get your compilation, get your music together. So I went back and I started calling labels. And I started building relationships, and I told Juanito, "Hey, man, no disrespect, you know, but I want to let you know, hit it." He goes, "Dude, go ahead and do your do your CD, bro. That's that's awesome. Go for it, man. That, that's gonna help you." I'm like, "Cool." So I had the blessing. I moved forward, and I did my thing. My boy Alex was like, "Man, dude, this is your opportunity, dude. Just you know, run with it." Cool. So I I made the 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 um the move and started getting on these records, and I started calling the numbers, and that's how I started building relationships. I started calling all these record labels, say, "Hey, man, I'm doing this mix uh this mix uh CD." I want to see what you have new that's that's not out yet. I would love to put them out. All right, cool. Uh, we want to see what we can do on a licensing deal. I'm like, a licensing deal? No, he goes, oh, yeah, they asked me. So so you're trying to license it. We want to work on a licensing deal with you. And they're asking me. I'm like, licensing? Okay, well, let me let the label. I didn't know what it was back then. Yeah. So so I called people. Hey, they want to do a licensing? Well, yeah, that's what you're doing. We're licensing the music to use. Oh, okay, I don't know the terminology. I'm just a DJ. So I I, I hit them up again. I call. yeah, well, get us some music. And at that time, they would send music on ADAT. It was like a little, uh, little like, uh, like you know, like a uh, little disc, little tape. Right. So they sent it to us, and we put it to the studio, and then we just we had transferred everything over, and uh, and then they started sending me records. And I had some stuff on CD. I'm like, man, I don't play off a CD. So we had to do little tricks. Like we'll play the song into it, and then I would have to mix into that, and then I would do tricks around it. So it was it was pretty cool because they had music that was not released yet, so they would put an ADAT. So I was releasing music before it even came out. So my CD was a, a way ahead of his time. So they put a lot of money behind me, man. And and then I, I get a phone call and I see myself on Billboard uh, magazine and they did, wow. did an interview with me. I had an interview with the LA Times and then they put me on a high school tour, dude. And that was it. That's pretty much took me all over the place. And my CD blew up, dude. It, it started doing different things. I started doing release parties. And then uh, wow. when I got my when I got my first advancement, bro, I was like, wow, dude. Like I never seen as much money, you know what I mean, in my life at that age. So I invested. So I bought myself a car, you know, I got myself something cool. And then again, I was learning, you know, I still go back with one, to learn how to produce. And I'm like, you know what, dude, I could do this. I could start my, my own label and start learning different people. I already know how to produce. So I asked Juanita, what equipment do I buy? And what can I do? He goes, buy this, buy this, get this, get that. All right, cool. So I bought it. And I just stood in my garage and started making music. And I came out with a, a label called Wicked Vinyl, you know what I mean? Kind of branching off of Wicked Productions. So Wicked Vinyl came out, and I started bringing projects out, and then all these connections and people that I knew, I would call all these labels and ask, "Hey man, I came up with this new thing. I, I know it's you know it's hard to to give out your connections, but I don't know where to, to you know where to press or where to go." And he goes, "We'll do this, Cazelle, and blah blah blah." So being that I put money in their pocket to help them to come up with my the, my project, they helped me out in return. So I built that relationship because remember the the label had to pay for all the music that they're licensed to put on the mix CD. Yeah. So I ended up making a, a, a building a friendship and a relationship. So they told me where to press. They would help me out with what to do and what record stores and where to sell. And dude, I pressed my first record and and it sold out. I was like, wow. And then I pressed another one and I repressed. And I was just in business, bro. And at that time, I I, I needed help because we started delivering to the local record stores. The record stores were everywhere. So I hired two people, and that's all I did, bro. Was had people, one person there shipping people, shipping all music out. Because back then it was COD, cash and delivery. So I had UPS coming to my house, and then they they would pay UPS, and then I'll get a check mailed to me. So one day <clears throat> I take off and uh, get working, dude, just like it's just a job. And my dad's like, Well, now you have to pay for the garage, you're paying for the phone. We pay, all right, cool. Is he charging me rent? So I started helping out, you know, I'm helping my dad. It's cool. 
So one day I took off and I, I think I went to go perform somewhere up north. And um, I, I came back and, and, and my, my dad was like, man, boy, you got, you got a bunch of checks right here. And da, da, da. He goes, I accidentally opened one up. And he goes, man, he goes, you get paid that much? Like, what are you talking about? And keep in mind, dude, I, was, I, I remember I have all these records out. So I would make money off of the local record stores, but I forget because I, I ship records out. So those are COD. So they sent me a check. So but at that time, all that stuff accumulated. And I looked at my checks like, damn, dude, 10,000, 20,000. Like, wow. dude, like I had, I have, I was like just amazed, dude, at how, how much, you know, music and money that was involved into that scene. So wow. I would, I was continuing doing it and I flipped it and I started opening up like CD stores and, and a embroidery company. And, you know, I mean, just, I did my own thing, bro. And that okay. pretty much led on. Time out. It did, it did pretty good. Yeah. Let's take a time out. I'm going to take a breather real quick because. <laughs> <laughs> you want the interview, bro? I'm telling you. Oh yeah, no, be dude, a novella, bro. I'm, I'm loving this, bro, because all this is happening, and this is what's going on in my head, bro. This is all happening. I think you're still high school age, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, 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 had, thinking... I had dropped out because I got kicked out for all my ditching parties, and I had a team running that while I was doing my music, and and just and my, I mean, my team was wonderful, bro. I had I love my my, and I still talk to them today, dude. You know, everybody has their families are doing good, but I ended just just sticking with it, bro, and. And, and got blessed to be able to do that, bro. And a lot of that, honestly, bro, I'll get deeper into that. But I, I'll tell you who really got me back involved in that because I did take a break from the business for a minute. Yeah. But, but go ahead. We're going to ask me a question. Of course, I just, I just want to get my thoughts on that story because it's, it's a little long-winded, but it's an awesome story. And it's, and it's awesome because I'm sitting here like, okay, man, like at that age, to try to run a business, to make music, to be a DJ, touring, have the vision and this is what we talked about at the beginning of the interview it's like i feel like you're a visionary a businessman a dj much more but this is at a very young age and mm -hmm. i feel like it's like prodigy status bro because i mean back then what i'm thinking about is chasing girls you know what i mean fucking getting bad grades you know playing sports i'm not really thinking of business i'm not thinking of like calling record labels and fucking mm -hmm. trying to figure out the whole bullshit like how to make money you're like on this hustle mode like this is like some some prodigy shit like you're taking it to the next level where most people would have been i would have took that check and you know blown it on some fucking whack car that i would have crashed like because i don't even know how to drive yet you know what i mean <laughs> so I, I appreciate the story and i think that when people hear this it's like bro this is a very young age and you're you're doing things that most people need like a label to kind of like keep them together but you're doing this on yeah. your own you know like yeah. there's no producer like dr dre telling you what to do like you are the fucking producer and you are making the music so how many tracks i mean do you think that you were putting together at that time uh was it like multiple tracks that you're shipping out under yourself or is it just a few and we're touring or how, how did that go so so i got i got smart so i started seeing okay cool I had I had came out with eight um, EPs, which were four songs into one record. Okay. I came out with all those, and I started selling them, and I started noticing like, okay, I sold a lot, and I repressed, and some of them are sitting there. Like, how can I move these records? So I was like, okay, cool, I got an idea. So then I started calling these labels again, and I said, hey man, would you be interested in doing a trade? I know you sell some stuff. Let me get fifty of yours. I'll give you fifty of mine. So this way, it, it kind of circles. You know, that's a good idea. Then I did it with the next label. So now those records that were sitting there. Now I have the same amount of records, but I'm selling different titles now of other people's music and I'm pushing them along with mine. So oh. people are like, oh, I got that, but I don't get this one. So the music that I was in Chicago, where a lot of DJs had to wait out here, I would provide it to the record stores and oh. then I would, I would sell. So it worked out good. Wow. See, again, I, I'm like, you know, picking my nose, bro, at that age. And you're like thinking of just ideas to hustle. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a... Uh... It's insane. So you drop out of school. I, I did have a question about that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, were the parents freaking out, or are they just seeing the checks and they're just like, "Yeah, whatever." He's, he's it, it was, it was, it was like this, dude. You know what I mean? Like every parent wants their kids to graduate. You know what I'm saying? Like my my older brother did, which is awesome. That's cool. You know what I mean? But uh, um, I don't know, bro. Music has always been my thing, bro. I think that was just uh, just my my schooling was just growing up in the streets, bro. Learning where not to go, what to do, where to be. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm. I, I, I've learned a lot, dude, just, just growing up in the streets and that in general, that music too. And then the business, I think I just taught myself and, and to learn that part of surviving, you know what I mean? Uh, and it sucks, dude. I dropped off in my junior year, dude. You know what I'm saying? And and I know that I, I probably could have did more of it, but 
at that time, bro, it was like your your time is very valuable, bro. Like you could miss an opportunity. So you got to be at a certain place at a certain time. And that's what I felt. So by me doing ditching parties and doing this, even though knowing I'm supposed to be at school, I ended up meeting a producer or I meet a, a, a company that that's either sponsoring or, or something, bro. Because at that time, it's crazy. I ended up getting sponsored by a, a energy drink from Hanson. So, you know, they were sponsoring me at that time. They were trying to do like a Red Bull type thing. You know, it, and it was cool. It did its little thing, but it never went to the next level. Yeah. But it was just awesome to be involved in different stuff. So I ended up getting that connection just by being at a ditchy party or being at a different area, you know what I mean? Doing something. So again, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? I, I, I encourage people to stay in school. I encourage, you know what I mean? Kids that are listening right now, like, 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 you know what I mean? Build your, build your portfolio. You know what I mean? You know, get, get that diploma. It is important, dude. I tell my kids the same thing. They even say, well, dad, you didn't graduate. So look, man, if I had an opportunity to do that and do what I'm doing, I would definitely do that. But you know, times are different. You know what I mean, I never had that chance to, and at that time, like, you know, I, I needed to survive. You know, I needed to pay bills. I needed to do stuff. You know, what I mean, and help out the family and do what I need to do. And and then I was uh, blessed to be able to do that, dude. You know what I'm saying? But it was it was crazy times, bro. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was. I only lasted till my junior year, bro. <laughs> yeah. So the ditching parties, because I remember these ditching parties. It was a little bit before my time. I was kind of like right around that that era of like the ditching parties and things like that. But I mean, I know from where I came from, as far as like the school, like if I was throwing ditching parties, I don't care how low key they were, I probably would have got my ass busted. You know what I mean? Like, so I mean, were you dealing with cops all the time? Cause I mean, and whose house were you fucking doing it at? Was it like, bro, how did that we go? had it, we had it like all like set up like, like dope dude. Like, you know what I mean? It, it was, it was crazy. So we would either go to a vacant home, okay. somebody that, you know what I mean? Whatever. And then we'll hit it at a certain time. You know well, well, the vacant house was this like a straight up vacant house or was this like a kid? So it's was like old? it's like a, it's like a house that that someone's trying to rent. Okay, you know what I'm saying, or so or, or, or try to uh, sell or whatever the case may be. Okay, because back there, bro, like there's so many houses for sale. Like the condo is weird, you know what I mean. So there was a lot of homes that were available. Mm -hmm. So what we would do is like fuck, let's go hit it. All we got to do is go in the backyard, bring it to the backyard. And a lot of the times the electricity was on, but the way we would check is we would get there. The, uh, the day before and go try to hit what which, which was working we'll get in the back and we'll plug something in all right cool power's on and then we'll take the system out there and hook it all up you know what i mean and it was risky you know what i mean because at that time we would have to we'll tell the dj's look bro i'll pay you this much and just act like yeah you didn't know that you thought it was somebody's house or whatever all right cool i go if it gets if it gets you know taken or whatever we'll pay for it bro cool luckily that never happened you know what i mean because the, the cops didn't want to do with all paperwork and all that bullshit they would just kick us out so being that nobody lived at the house, nobody nobody really pressed charges, so it was cool. But then there was times though that we would convince other people like, "Hey, bro, come on, dude, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Let us use your backyard, bro. We'll be gone by your parents get home." And and some people are like, "Oh, yeah, okay, cool." They didn't know, and then we we would use their backyards, bro. But there was one time like, man, it was crazy. Uh, I was in East LA, and because uh, we would travel with it, bro. I met people parties from everywhere. So we're in East LA, and I, and I remember. Uh, I remember the Nas tanks were really popular back then, dude. Everybody was selling Nas. So the dude that rented us his pad, he was like, he was a square dude, you know what I mean? Like, he was just into school and doing his thing, but, you know, he wanted to, to hang out, you know, with, with the, the crew crowd, I guess. <laughs> and he was yeah. like, man, come come use my house, blah, blah, blah. Right, cool, dude. So we paid up, and uh, and it was bad, bro. The dude had a big-ass pad, dude. The backyard was big, and the cool thing about his house is that it went long. So in the front, you couldn't really tell what was happening because everybody was in the back. We made sure that Everybody went to the back, and not too many people had cars back then, so people would get dropped off or they'd park the car somewhere else, or they would leave from, from Shore High School, or the high school could just walk there, boom, and everybody would be in the back. So the, this dude that we rented the house from or whatever, you know, he, he, was, he was trying everything, bro. I guess, like, you know, like a, a once you let a dog out and tries to do whatever he wants to do it before he gets back home. Well, dude, I see the dude blazing. I see the dude drinking. I see the dude hitting the, uh, fucking the, the balloon. I'm like, damn, dude, this dude's fucking going crazy. So I told him, my guys, they go, go check on the dude, bro. Make sure he's all right, dude. I don't, I don't want anything to happen to him. All right, cool. So he walked up to him, and 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 he hit another balloon, with dude, and he started talking all woo, woo, like, bro. And my guy sat him down. Like, you need to relax. So the dude, bro, this is a crazy story. <laughs> so the cops, the cops come, bro, and we're like, oh, okay, everybody just keep cool, turn everything down. But the cops didn't know where where, where the party was because. They were driving up and down because they could they did they they didn't see anybody hanging in the front. So they kept going up and down, but then we just told everybody to just keep quiet. So the, the cops were like whatever. And this fucking dude, bro, goes up to the front. He goes, Don't worry about it, guys, don't worry, I got it. He walks up to the front 
and he told me, "Hey, I'm gonna stop the party right now, so don't worry about it." I'm like, "Dude, uh, like nobody, nobody knew they were there." He goes, "Oh, so this is where the party?" Goes, yeah, yeah. But I told everybody to keep it down, <laughs> and everybody looked at him, dude. And they're like, "Okay, cool." So the other cops came, and bro, they they all got there, and they they let everybody out, and they told everybody to leave, and and he ended up getting in trouble, dude, because all the stuff that was back there. Uh, so we wow. we try we try to call him again and get a hold of him after that, bro. And the dude was in my dude. <laughs> we, never, we never seen him after that, bro. I don't know. We don't know what happened. It's funny because I talked to some of the guys. You remember that cat dude who used to go to his house with the East LA and he loves you as a pet? He goes, Yeah, I was that, bro. I think his parents fucking moved him out and sent him somewhere else, dude. Wow. And, and I, know, I think bro, his dad. Oh, go ahead. No, I said, I think his dad would own like a like a car dealership or something. And then the mom was a teacher or something, dude. Some Something weird like that. Because he had nice cars. He had nice stuff. It was a nice house, bro. In East LA, dude. Like, really, really nice pad. I don't want to say he's a bit weird, dude. It was somewhere around there because I think they, everybody went to Shore High School or Pioneer. It was one of those because they were walking through there. But yeah, that was it was a crazy story, bro. So are you like when you, guys are, when you guys are promoting these shows? I mean, are you just hitting up the high school like with some flyers, or is that that, that too risky? So so high schools we would hit high schools all the time, but we go in there, walk in there, and then we knew other party crews, so we would go in there and be like, "Hey, dude, we'll put you on strongest to party by on our on our flyer here, dude. Just and we'll let your your people in for free. All right, cool." You know what I mean? And then we just go to every high school. And then also on the weekends, there's always parties. So we'll, we'll promote our flyers and put our page number on there. And that's where all our party information was on. And then we'll hit at a certain time. All right, cool. Call that 8 o'clock and the, the address will be on there. They will tell right, everybody, blah, 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 da, da, da. Address is right here. Starts at this time. Boom. $5 to get in, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? And that's how it worked, bro. It was, it was crazy. It was a crazy little business, dude. Yeah. And it just took off to something different. Yeah, man. And then, like, the Rebels, and they had, like, the Groovers. I remember Groovers, and Re Rebels was, like, a big thing right there. Like, was there, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's fights. They're probably destroying the houses. <laughs> there's probably all kinds of stuff going on, right? Bro, it was, it was crazy, dude. It was, it was crazy. But you know what's crazy, bro, is that I ended up meeting a lot of these guys that started this whole Rebel thing and all this. Like, I, it's, like, weird because I was in that scene, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. My boy Playboy was the one that started Rebel Familia. At that time, it was real big, and he was a main, main head, and that was my boy. So oh, wow. it was, it, I mean, it was crazy, bro. There's some stories. There was one time where, where these rebel fools tried to jump me, dude, because I always looked like a homie. I was always bald, big pants, white shirt. You know what I mean? I was, I was a little gangster DJ. And, uh, one, I mean, rebels didn't like that. You know what I mean? So I remember I was in a, a party in, um, West Covina. It was me and my group and my, and my, my team. We went there and I, I, I was going to the DJ booth and one of these rebel Jews bumped me. Oh. And then, um, and I turned on and or turned around like, what the fuck, homie? And then, he was like, what's up, what's up? And all these rebels came up, and I started looking at them. My, my guys come up, and the dude pushed me, dude. Boom. Pushed me and went back, and then my guys went and punched punched the, the dude. And then the, the my homie comes up, and he goes, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. And he was like, he looked at me. And he, oh, oh, he looked. He was like, what's up? What's cracking? And then I looked at him. He goes, oh, cause what's up, dog? And everybody turned and looked at my boy. And then my guys turned and looked at me. And he, he comes and he hugs me. How you been? And he shook my hand, blah, blah. <laughs> he goes, what happened? I go, your boy bumped me, dog. He tried to act stupid up here. Who? Which one? And then the dude was like, oh, well, I don't know. And the dude turned around and clocked him, bro. Boom. In front of his people. He goes, this is my boy. Don't ever feel come and act stupid, blah, blah. And I was like, damn, dude. And the dude came up. I apologize. I'm sorry, bro. Da, da, da. Just, he was on a good one. Back then, there was a bunch of tweakers, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's just the way it was. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it was just funny. But yeah, we did a party that night and it was everything was cool. And and that that's that was like my interesting rebel story. But <laughs> yeah, there was there's a lot of them, dude. Then Groovers came in and a lot of breakers and it was it was a cool element at that time, bro. A lot a lot of crazy elements, you know. Yeah, so there was a change at one point, right? So I think it just and I, I don't know what your opinion is on this. I mean, I always feel like, you know, there's a music that comes out, like let's just say for hard house or deep house, but it gets to a point where it comes out, it's raw, it's new. And then there's like perfection, right? And then and then from there it kind of like either it goes to the next level and then it kind of dies off. So that is that what happened with the hard house for you? Is it like it kind of yeah, it, it, it definitely did, dude. It, it definitely did because everybody started putting out just anything because everybody started seeing the element and, and the recipe, I guess you call it, where oh, mm -hmm. I can do this, I can put this together at this, and then I'll make this. So everybody started labels, bro. Everybody started doing putting on music and they just started getting harder, 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 harder. To the point where it just got saturated, dude, and and the scene died on its own. You know what I mean? And that's when I just I took a break from everything, bro. I took a break from everything. I left everything. I was just running my businesses. You know what I mean? And then I I met my wife, bro. You know what I mean? I met my wife, and and she's the one that 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 literally just got me, you know, on my toes, bro, and got me back in 
got me back in business, dude. You know, what I mean, things were 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 going um, sour, dude. The business was bad, so I sold everything off, and and uh, you know, I mean, my wife was my my biggest supporter, dude. And it was just crazy how everything just worked out. Mm-hmm. So time went on, you know, what I mean, just just being a family man, raising my kids. And my wife was telling me, like, you know, I know you miss DJ. I know you miss doing this stuff. And and keep in mind, bro, I didn't know nothing about Serato. I didn't know nothing about that. So my, my wife would just tell me, well, well, why don't you get into it? And once I start doing this, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. So I learned, dude, you know what I mean? And uh, I met my boy DJ Thing, rest in peace. And he's the one that taught me how to use Serato, dude. And, and my wife was like, go for it. You know what I mean? Shout out to my wife, Tanya. Love you, baby. But, uh, yeah, she's the one that, that pushed me, bro, like, like it's true what they say, bro. It takes a strong woman to make a strong man, and and, and she definitely made me strong and and motivated me, bro. Like like back to where I'm at now, you know. So, long story short, bro, we we uh um, you know, we got booked for a, a show for me to DJ. It was like a freestyle show, and my wife's like, "Well, here's your chance, go do it." Dude. So we did it. We went, and and I loved it, bro. Some of the people recognized me, remembered who I was, and and the vibe was there, bro. And I just I just fell in love with DJing again, bro. So then. I was like, you know, I told my wife, look, I want to get back into start doing this. I want to, I want to start doing shows. Like, I see the opportunity. I see this, and like, I started messing around with funk music because I know house was done. So I love funk. I'm like, well, this is my opportunity to play what I what I love, dude. Like, this electric funk, the zap, and all this. So, and then just kind of mixing it with different stuff. Like, I'm gonna be creative with it. So I did it, dude. And I was telling my wife, you know, man, I want to start doing shows, and I want to start doing this. It's like, all right, you know what I mean? So she supported me all the way through, bro, and. You know, it's basically my partner doing everything. So that's when we started DJ Kazell Presents. And we started throwing shows and started doing different things. And I started putting myself on, on different platforms and booking, you know, Egyptian Lover, opening up, and then Britain Wood and, you know, yeah, just the, mixing up the elements. Here? What's the, sorry to cut you off, but what's the time frame and what's the year, if you remember? I was off the, I was out, out of the scene, bro, for eight years. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and, and I was a, a silent investor in a lot of these rappers and people that are out there right now, too. So I would invest into a lot of these people, dude. You know what I mean? And then I got to the point where, like, you know, I wanted, you know, this is when I started looking into music and just DJing part. And then my wife was like, well, if you're ready. And then my kids were older, too. So I was like, man, it's perfect. So that's why I, I didn't want to feel guilty. I wanted to be there for my kids. I wanted to be around and, and, and you know, just didn't want to take away that that time with them. And I was blessed to be able to, to have that and to have what I'm doing now. So I, I want to say about eight years I was gone. And I recently got back into this. About 2000, 2022, maybe about three, four, five, four, about five years, bro. About five years I've been back in the business and just hitting it hard. Yeah, about five years. Now, you, you ended up getting, well, you're in the studio now, right? And you, I want to go into some of the artists that you have and that you've worked with. I think one of them was Trish Toledo, right? She was like one of the first uh, artists that you kind of discovered and seen um and put her put her like on some songs and things like that right you, uh can you go into that because i think she's obviously the queen of modern soul at this point so can you talk about yeah so so it's that? so on, on that part it was was jo- uh, joey quinones okay. so joey did all that joey produced her joey brought her out i i never brought her out like production wise i put her on shows like I, I i was able to book her in a fresno show and there's some local stuff out here which is cool but okay. That credit all goes to Joey Quinones. I, I didn't. I used to see uh, Trish at different shows, at different stuff that we all did. She would be out there with her little iPad and, and performing. You know what I mean, or a little uh, iPod or whatever. Okay. But I didn't know her or, or involved with her music career. That part, that was all Joey's doing. Um, I was able to meet Joey when I started the label, and uh, we basically helped out each other. You know what I mean? We we combined it. He came into my studio. He started working out of here. He started helping me build my company. And we just helped out each other, and he branched, and we branched, and we're still still working today. His studio is right next door to me, so wow. we, we we yeah we work we work together. So yeah, so getting back to Trish, I, I didn't have no uh, uh no doing on on her on her uh, on her music or stuff like that. I just happened to book her for shows and stuff like that. Okay, you know uh, the, the person that I that I really uh, helped and, and developed was Mariah. Mariah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of how I came across you was doing an interview with her and, you know, her being under your label and, and under your guidance there. So what did you see in her? And, and you know, I, I know, um, I mean, obviously you're the, the person that put her on. So what did you see in Mariah uh, at the at that early stages? So the way it, it, it started, dude, I, I had just came back from, from touring. Um, at that time, I was working with Bobby D and we're doing some shows with them. And um, 
we had just came back and like the pandemic thing hit and I was throwing my own only concerts. Um, and it, that was great, dude. We, we formed this whole Soldies thing, this whole Soldies genre, you know what I mean? And and I started, I was the, the one that did the first Soldie concert and that name just started blowing up and that's what we, we named this genre, you know? So I got to the point where I'm like, man, dude, you know, shows are starting to get shut down. We can't do anything. And I talked to my boy, Rocky Padilla, and it's been my boy since I was a kid too. That's another, another good, good friend of mine, bro. And, uh, I told him, man, I want to start a label, dude. And I, and I'm like, yeah, really? So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna chop it up with my lady about it, dude. You know, cause she's like my, my, uh, business advisor. And, you know, I mean, she pretty much tells me, well, we could do this or we can't do this or this could work out or, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna chop it up with Tanya. Let me see what she thinks. So I, I did that. And uh, uh, I asked her, what do you think about doing a label? And he goes, well, well like, what kind of label? You know, like, you know, I mean, while well, this whole music thing, this whole scene, I'm going to call it Soldies. I think this is something big that could work. And, you know, these younger groups of kids building up to, to this type of music. Because I was already doing oldie concerts already. That, that's been my passion, you know what I mean, to do that. So if you do some research on me, you'll see, like, the shows I've done. I've done a lot of oldie stuff, you know. So I was like, man, this is my opportunity to, to do a label because me and my dad had a conversation about it a long time ago. Man, it'd be good if somebody to bring back the music and do like a label. And I did that. And 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 uh, I had a conversation with my mom and dad about it. I said, you know, I'm going I'm to do a label. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring out this music. And my mom said, like, that's good. You know, that help out a lot of these kids because these kids, you know, I mean, there's a lot of talent out there. I'm like, all right, cool. So I asked Rocky, who do you think, bro? Who would be a good, like, a candidate, bro? And he was like, man, dude, there's a lot of singers, bro. But have you heard my, my backup singer? I'm like, who, Mariah? Like, oh, the girl that that that, that sings the, um, that was doing that the vocal backup and the oohs and ahs and goes, yeah, dude, you gotta hear it, man. Like, All right, cool. So I went. He goes, come into one of our practices. So I went, and I was listening, and and she was, it's crazy because she was being doing a lot of my backline, a lot of my shows should be the backup person, mm-hmm. and and it's not that I didn't pay attention to her, it's just that when you throw concerts, you're paying attention. Okay, is the line coming in quicker? Are, are, are nobody sneaking in? How's the bar doing? And you know what I mean? Is there any fights? Like. How's the line? Is everybody getting faster? You know what I mean? Like, I'm worried about that shit. Like, the, the lineup, everything cool. Like, I'm not paying attention to the back. I never really get to enjoy my shows. So until he told me, come check it out, I went and I sat down and I was listening to her. I was like, fuck, dude, this girl could sing, dude. Like, hitting these high notes and the oohs and ahs. I was like, damn, dude, like, she's dope. And then Rocky's looking at me. And then he's like, I'm like, damn, she's bad. I told her, man, you're awesome. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's cool, man. All right, cool. Like, like, I, I got something in the works, you know what I mean? But I'm going to hit you up when I'm ready. Like, I, he goes, all right, cool. Yeah, Rocky kind of gave me a heads up. All right, cool. So I got up. I told Rocky. He's like, I'm like, bro, you know, I'm going to start this label, bro. I'm going to get this going. Well, cool, bro. Like, you need help or anything? I got you. All right, cool. I appreciate it, bro. Like, bring me artists. Bring me this. I'm going to start looking into it. And it just so happened, bro, where it worked out perfect because Joey was here already, you know, working in the studio. And that's when I was telling him, I'm going to start the label. And and it was just like a perfect timing, dude. Like, like it was just meant to be, you know? Yeah. So Joey's like, bro, I'll help you, dude. I'll help you start making some of the music. Like, let's, let's, let's get her in here. All right, cool. So I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, bro. I don't know too much of this, dude. The, this business is a whole different era, dude. So he was like, all right, well, I started learning and getting more involved in that. So I finally was able to talk to Mariah. I said, look, Mariah, I have an idea. I said, what I want to do, I don't know anything about this. You know what I mean? It's a whole new scene for me, but I know the business. I'm a promoter, and I know I can get you out there. I just bear with me. You know what I mean? I just want to be honest with you. And she's like, well, what's your name of your label? And um, I'm like, dude, it just came to me. And I'm like, Industry Music Group. You know what I mean? And she was like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm like, damn, okay. So at that time, I had DJ Kazel, well, I still had DJ Kazel Presents. I had my boy Ruben, I was helping out. You know what I mean? He was, he was helping with my stuff. My wife's still helping me out. My brothers, everybody was helping out. But um, Ruben, you know, we started uh, helping out. He's another Ruben, uh, DJ for for night. He was getting more influenced than in it. And he was like, hey, bro, if you need help, I can help you out and stuff. So, he started helping with the label, you know, be my right hand man, helping the stuff, and my wife too, helping with the stuff that like, inspired me to be like, yeah, this sounds good, this one, and kind of helping us develop everything. So we did it. I said, you know, I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a meeting with Mariah and have her come in. So I brought her in, and she came in with her mom, and I was like, damn, dude, I was, a, I was nervous, dude. Like, you know, what I mean? how am I gonna explain this, this whole business uh, idea when I don't really even know what I'm doing, dude? You know, what I mean, I have an idea, but I don't even know which route I'm gonna go. So, anyways. Met the mom, dude, and she's just just looking right through me, dude, and 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 she's asking questions. Oh. And I said, "Yeah, I do." I was nervous, bro. So yeah. I said, "Look, with all due respect, this is my idea. So what I want to do? Your daughter's really talented, and I feel like I get her. To, I can take her to the next level. You know, what I mean, I'm a promoter, so that I'm I'm good at doing that. You know, but you know, what I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, this is new to me, and you know, 
my label's industry music group. You know, it's, it's the music that this industry's missing. You know what I mean? Plus industry, I grew up in La Puente, city of industry. So, you know what I mean? That 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 all kind of came together. What what meant, you know, a lot to me. It all incorporated into to my, my label logo and everything. So um, she was like, okay, cool. Goes, yeah, we're from La Puente too. Da, 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 da. I was okay. like, oh, that's cool. So it kind of all worked out together. So I told her, look, this is my idea. I promise you I won't fail you. I'm going to do everything I can to make this happen. You know what I mean? But you just got to believe in me. You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't have all the answers yet, but just just give me the opportunity. And I promise you, I won't fail your daughter. You know, I just just give me this opportunity to, to do what I need to do and I'll make it happen. So it's, all right, well, let me think about it. And then we started talking numbers, business, all that stuff. <clears throat> and then um, she left and, and uh, she said, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. And then Mariah said, all right, I'll get back to you because uh, we'll talk. All right, cool. So a couple of days went on and my boy Ruben was like, man, dude, like I was nervous. I mean, yeah, it was crazy, dude. Like, ah, oh, man, it's not going to work. And then I told my wife, I went home and I, like, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. Because, well, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. You know what I mean? Just don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I get a phone call. She's like, yeah, because, you know, my mom, she's, she's, she's into it. Can you drop the contract and blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. They came down and, you know, we started talking more. And, uh, yeah, the, 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 everything was history after that. She signed the contract, came into an agreement, and uh, we started working, dude. And then Joey was like, all right, cool. This is what we need to do, blah, blah, blah. So he started helping me, and we started coming out with music. So I said, okay, so first things first, we got to come up with a song that that people know because they don't know you yet. So they have to hear you on a, on a familiar song. So this is where they get to hear your style. So we well, came up with Hypnotize, and Hypnotize started getting produced. She sang it, and I said, well, we have to come up with a dope video. So we recorded that video at my mom's house in La Puente. Oh. And uh, we the whole element, and we brought in Jimmy Reyes. And, you know, I mean, at, at that time, uh, well, Still now, I I have a show at Old School One for Seven, and and Jimmy's my my fellow uh, worker, you know what I mean. So <laughs> I hit him up. Hey, do you want to jump on the on on, the, on this uh, video? I was like, bro, I don't know nothing about that. I'm not an actor. Well, just come in and just just play a little role. And then he did it, bro. And everything was pretty much history from there. You know what I mean? And it just started growing. And you know, we are where we are now. You know what I mean? It just we hit a lot of bumps in the road, definitely. But, you know, I was able to meet connections and, and build more stuff. And then we started coming out of vinyl and then music videos. And, you know, we ended up getting our deal with Sony Orchard. So that, that worked out pretty good in our distribution deal. Yeah, and I feel so like it how... was like, yeah, and that, I mean, that's an awesome story. And I feel like it's like you were one of, like, the leaders right there in, like, bringing that sound back. You know what I mean? And if not the leader, I mean... It's it's become it become it's become a whole genre, you know, the modern soul. They call it mo- modern soul. I don't know what you call it, but I think soldies. a lot of people, soldies, modern soul. <laughs> I, I hear all kinds of different, you know, uh, you know, labels for that type of music. But at the end right. of the day, I mean, I think you definitely found a star. I mean, I I, I interviewed Mariah. She was so gracious enough to do it with your blessing, <laughs> and uh, you know, she's she's been a really a powerhouse out there. And I think a lot of people that I come across that hear her music and even just know her, they just love it. You know, they love who she is. You know, they, they buy into who she is. Like, she's almost like, and she is, I feel in my heart, like a person of the people, you know? Yeah. She's, she's definitely, she's definitely a people person. That was one thing that, 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 that sparked off everything because I'm like, you have to have a package in this industry, man. You can't just be an artist and have a fucked up attitude. That's not going to work. Like I told her too, like, hey, Mariah, if you're a bitch, dude, and you're gonna talk to people, I would not fuck with. I don't care how dope you are, you know what I mean? Because no, nah, no, nah. because honestly, I remember that since I was a kid, like coming up to that one person and and then fucking acting like an asshole with me, you know? Like I would never be like that with anybody. And she's not like that. She goes takes pictures, you know. What I mean, all my artists, they're all the same way, bro. And, and and I did happen to have somebody that came in my office one time that we were really interested in signing, dude. But fortunately, the person didn't have the 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 right attitude, dude. And and it's, I didn't want that, bro. I don't want everyone to think that. Fuck, my shit don't stink, and I'm who, who, like, man, you're blessed with a gift, yes, but I'm not sure you're going to hear what I'm saying now, but it's cool, man. It's got to be real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it, just, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? To be successful in this industry has to come with a package. You got to have talent, first of all, and you got you to gotta be able to communicate with your fans and, 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 and be humble, dude. That's the key to any business, humble. You know, because I'll take you far, man. It definitely will, but... You know, I'm just I'm 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 blessed to have her a part of my team. I'm blessed to have all my artists, you know, I'm mean, a part of the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? From Rocky Padilla, from Michaela, you know, Las Lagrimas, you know what I mean? I, I have I have a great team, dude, and you know, color me bad. You know what I'm saying? Like we have a we have a lot of great people, dude, that that are coming through, you know what I mean? And, and uh uh Ron Pryor, Napoleon, my boy Napoleon Demps, you know, what I mean? we have we have some great stuff that's coming out, guys, and I'm just really uh 
happy and I'm excited to to bring a lot of this music out. But I give shout outs too to all these labels that are doing it too, man. Like I I see all all these casts, man. And this is what we needed to do um, to to just come together, just keep keeping this music going, dude. You know what I'm saying? So I give a lot of respect to all these labels that are doing it out there as well too. Yeah, so I want to talk about just um, you know you you discovering this artist. Like, are you guys scouring the the Instagrams or are they coming to you? How how does that happen? Just for someone that maybe watch this or come across this and maybe be in contact with you. But how do you usually find artists? And then also, what do you look for? So basically, it has to come with a package. You know, what I mean, like we'll we'll scout them, we'll look online, we'll check music videos. You know, what I mean, we want to see how the stage presence is first of all. We want to see how they interact with the crowd because that's that's very important you know uh, and then we all just we just look at their instagrams and their messages and see if they reply back to their to their fans or people that that, that say oh you did awesome you know what i mean and be like oh thank you i appreciate it. like all that stuff means a lot to me so before i even approach anybody i'll look at that even if they don't have a fan base yet or they're just really starting like i love developing artists you know it's like planting the seed and seeing it blossom and grow and to know that you're behind that bro that's an awesome feeling you know and that's that's what we're what we're doing here at, at Industry Music Group. You know, what I mean, just giving opportunities and, and helping helping artists build. You know, what I mean, another cat, Johnny Davis, another person you guys gotta check out. But he's he's in the works right now too. But getting back to what we're talking about, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but I'm excited. I'm really excited because there's a lot of great things happening, bro. Like like you know, what I mean, with these artists and everybody. So with us, that's what we look into. You know, we look at the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and the YouTubes, and then we do happen to have people that email me. I'll listen to your guys' demos. You know, we sit down and we, and we listen to them here and we get an idea of, okay, cool, this could work. You know what I mean? You know, now that we got my, my, my brother Tony G, a part of the camp here and helping out like a big a big part of our company. You know what I mean? My boy Ruben Molina, you know what I mean? That dude's a basic old historian, you know what I mean? Like knows about, a lot about the music. And we really we really are serious with the with this culture, you know what I mean? And with this 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 sound and, and this genre, you know what I mean? So this is, is the next level, but this is what we do. You know what I mean? We, we, we come together, we... We monitor the, the social medias and we review artists and we come to a meeting and we, we reach out to them. You know, that's how we, we discover these artists and, and we bring them in. Yeah, and also like for the music videos, for a lot of your artists, you very clean, very done well. I think Concrete is like the main guy, right? Who kind of Correct. does all that. I mean, was that your doing there or was it just you seen his work and asked him to do it or? Well, I met, I met Concrete through a, through a mutual friend uh, Cause I was asking him, hey man, I need to get somebody that does videos, and I need to do this. And he was telling me, well, bro, my my boy, Concrete does videos. And then we met each other, we started talking, I started giving my vision, and he, and he was a big help too, bro. He was helping me and telling me what routes to go, what to do, and how to get distribution. And 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 and, and I appreciate that, dude. But I'm a loyal cat, dude. That's why you always see the same person, the same people doing what we do, because because that that I mean, if it's not broken, why try fixing it? You know what I mean? And and loyalty is a big thing with me. You know what I mean? Like I. I I, I like to continue keeping the same people and the same the same outlet of, of connections. You know what I mean? And if something else builds off, off of that, then that's cool. You know what I mean? But I always want to make sure I keep the same vibe. So Concrete was like, bro, I got your back. This work. You know what I mean? Even even though he's busy now too, doing so much stuff, bro, yeah. we, he still does my videos. And, he, and we just finished three of them right now, dude. So I'm happy to have those coming out. But he's wow. just a real humble cat. And, and, and we got along really good. And he gave me an opportunity, bro. And we just continued putting out videos. So... That being said, I mean, the videos was really important to me. And the reason why I wanted to do videos, I know a lot of labels don't do it, but the reason why I did it, because I remember growing up, bro, like I was looking at Yo! MTV Raps, you know, you look at B&T, you remember the video and then it makes you want to buy the cassette or the, the CD or the record. Right. So I'm taking it back to that same, using that same element and taking it back to the old school where, fuck, the video is out here. Now I can listen to the stream. Oh, does they have any 45s? Does she have any 45s or what do they have? So I saw as a package along with the merchandise and everything else, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's been working, bro. It's been working. So I I just continue doing that. You know what I mean? Continue bringing videos, music, records, just everything just comes together. You know what I mean? So it works out to help the artists and to help out, you know what I mean? The the audience as well. What uh, artists do you have right now that, you know, maybe we don't know too much about, but you're really excited about, do you have a few that you can name off that people can look out for or maybe go follow? Yeah, there is there is a couple, you know, there's a couple. Uh like I mentioned, my boy Napoleon Demps. Uh he's he's another cat, like really, really talented guy. We finished up a couple songs with them. Uh Michaela Rivera, you know, she's one of our younger artists that's coming out. Las Lagrimas. Uh they're they're really, really it's I mean, I don't want to call it Soldies. It's it's just like really a dope element of, of music. You can check it out right now. There's their music's on Spotify 
uh, called Missing You. You can see, you can hear the sound. It has a really good image. So they're they're good. Yeah, we we want to be open minded as well too. You know, we bring out different music and people kind kind of judge for themselves. But those are other artists that that we're bringing in. And Johnny Davis, another another guy that's really really dope. And you know, he has a great voice, great style, personality. So that's another guy that that we're working with right now too. And 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 and, and that's pretty much generally what I really have right now. I mean, there's the people in the works too. You know, I mean, Colored Me Bad is another one. Uh, but man, they're they're just we just revamped and put it that way. We're really excited about their release coming on Sequel the uh, Sequel the Mile. Um, they got some music videos coming out, some some interviews on TV. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna be coming out with them. You're gonna be seeing the advertisements starting really really soon. So we're we're excited about that, man. It just it's just been great. You know, what I mean, just to be able to to work with these people, but especially these new upcomers. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm excited about it. So that's where we're at, and then. You know, Mariah just she's she just seems to amaze me every day, man. She's writing new music, like you know, she's really getting down and writing her own stuff, and that's that's awesome. You know, what I mean, it's just it's cool to see how this is developing. You know what I mean? And everyone's developing as an artist, so. No, I'm that's, excited that's about pretty it. Much it. I'm, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I just want before we end this uh, interview, I just want to talk about because I've been seeing like obviously Mariah is doing some really big shows along with yourself. You're the DJ at these huge like arenas. <laughs> I mean, what's that been like, man? Like to go from like ditch parties to you know big arenas, and you're the man. Man, you know it's it's it's, it's definitely a blessing, bro. I, I I love entertaining the crowd. I love being out there. You know, what I mean, I, I teamed up with uh, with my boy Jim FKOA, so we started doing stuff along with my brothers, the commission, the Brera production, like we've been all working together and just, you know, just keeping the ideas and, and, and the element going and just putting these sh smaller shows onto a bigger platform. So we're going to be starting doing a lot more stuff. So I, I connected with a, with a great team, man, you know, a great team that is really open-minded and, and is willing to take risk. And that's what we're doing right now. So you're going to be seeing a lot more stuff and to be able to display my, my art and me DJing and doing different stuff is, is cool. You know what I mean? And, to be Rocky shows with my, with my boy Anthony Biscotti in stage and tripping the people out. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. what we love to do, and this is where we're at. But, yeah, just stay stay focused. You know what I mean? A lot, a lot of great things happening with, yeah. with everyone that we're working with. Well, where can everybody find you, man? Uh, where where should they follow you or, or uh, you know, find out about your shows that are coming up? Yeah, absolutely, man. So it's going to be www.industrymusicgroup.com. You can check it out there, or djkazelle.com. Or you can also go to... Um, any of my social media outlets, it's at DJ Kazel on my IG. Same thing with my TikTok. I just got a TikTok, dude. My kids are like laughing at me because oh, you know, I started messing with it. So, I mean, it's, it's cool. You know what I mean? I have that too as well. And then my uh, my Facebook page as well, it's a DJ Kazel also. So, if you guys could just hit that up too and hit up a like or a follow, I appreciate it, man. But yeah, you can hit me up any, any, anytime, man. I'm, any of those social media outlets. Man, I'm looking forward to all the stuff that you have going on. I'm looking forward to new music coming out. Uh, man, like I said, man, I'm a fan, man. Like, seriously, watching you just on the outside, interviewing your artist, um, you know, it's just, it's been really cool just to kind of see the development of like where this all started from and it's keep getting bigger and bigger. The shows are getting bigger and bigger. The artists are getting out there. So man, I just want to have to show you some love and definitely want to get the chance to like, you know, know your story. So I thank, thank you, man, you, man, for coming on here, man, for real. Like, I really appreciate it. Now I appreciate you too, man. Thank you for hitting me on, uh, getting me on the show, and and just asking me all these questions. I know I was all over the place, but it was cool. Oh, it was fun. Good, man. <laughs> good. And, and I apologize about my cell phone, bro. I should have oh. came with the computer from the beginning, you know. But that's cool. But I just want to say thank you again, man. I appreciate you, all my fans, all my people. I love you guys. Just, just thank you, man, for people that were with me since day one for sticking with me. My team, I love my team. DJ Cazelle presents Industry Music Group. Just everybody, man, for helping me out. You know, I have one of them running back there. Or two of them running back there. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say thank you. And my wife, man. I love you, Tanya. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. And that's what's up. It. All right, man. Peace out, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Peace. Thank you, man. See you guys soon. Have a good one, brother. Peace.